how to get your prayers answered. Yesterday we was talking about one of the keys to do it is to abide in God or to abide, abide with God. And in that fellowship, you are able to be connected to the source. Remember, your prayers getting answered is not your capability of, of answering them. It's God's capability of answering yeah. them. And when you are connected to the source, the source that supplies that to the vine in John 15 is that which comes into the branches. Remember, the word says that you cannot bear fruit unless you are connected. A branch cannot bear fruit by itself. So, to, But there was two things that Jesus said in John 15, 7 and 8 that d d directly translates to getting your prayers answered. The first one was, abide in me, and then he had the word, and my words abide in you. So the second key that we have in this to getting your prayers answered is having the word of God in you, abiding in the word of God and letting it come in and shift and change who you are, what you are, so you can have the reality of that word manifesting in your life. Yeah, and, and in addition to that, we, the importance of abiding in Him is doing it His way. And mm -hmm. in order to properly abide in Him, we've got to be filled with Him. Yeah. So we talked a lot yesterday, too, about the importance of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. it, because in order for prayers to be answered, it's got to be His Spirit that's leading us and teaching us how to pray in general. Yeah. So that is huge today, that through this whole broadcast, it's going to be Holy Spirit that leads us into the fullness of God's thoughts. So going to be awesome. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. I'm adding commentary. But it looks like we had, uh, we have two different networks here, and it looks like one of them went down while y'all were talking. So I think, is it still showing live on yours? All right, good. Just one double check. So go ahead. So John 15, verses 7 and 8. We'll read those again just like we did yesterday. And then there's a couple of different verses that we want to go to today that shows you the importance of this. So we're, first what we'll do, we'll read John 15, verses 7 and 8. And then, so this is Jesus talking, and then I want to show you where Paul reiterates the same thing that Jesus says later on in Colossians 3, verse 16. But John 15, verses 7 and 8 says this, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, and the very next thing that comes out of Jesus' mouth is this, Ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Verse 8, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and prove to be my disciples. So one of the things that we can see here is this, that God is glorified when we begin to produce the fruit of God, when we begin to produce, produce the fruit of Christ. And we, when we're in that fruit production, God is glorified, but not only that, we begin to prove that we are His disciples. One of the things that when, when you look at somebody, that's the, one of the things that we've heard, and Brother Brian, you've taught us this, follow the fruit. The fruit, will, the fruit cannot lie. An apple tree cannot bear orange fruit. It's, it's, it, if the apple tree is bearing orange fruit, that's not an apple tree, that's an orange tree. And then it also says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit because the, what, what you begin to see, the fruit tells you the health Mm -hmm. of the, the, the fruit tells you the health of the connection and the nutrients that yeah. that tree is getting. So if it's getting bad nutrients, it's going to produce bad fruit. When it starts getting the nutrients from heaven, well, it's going to begin to produce heavenly fruit. Your prayers should be the production of heaven in your life, not just for your benefit, but so others can eat off of it. I, I love using this example. Is an apple tree doesn't feed an apple tree. An apple tree produces fruits for others to come and pick off of it. So why do we have fruit? Is it just for us? No, it's for others to be able to eat off of so that the first part of verse 8 is there where it says, my father is glorified in this. Jesus wants us producing fruit so that, his, so that our father, the Lord God, will be glorified and prayer is one of the fruit productions of the kingdom. So as you see that now, I want you to jump over to Colossians 3 real quick. Before you go there, yes, sir. In, in verse 8, one of the things that happens is it says, when you, when you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Then it says this, my Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. So one of the things that you see that he's saying is when you get your prayers answered, the Father is glorified. Mm -hmm. and you prove to be his disciples, and this is actually, you bear fruit. He wants us to bear fruit. He yes. wants us to see our prayers answered. 
He doesn't want us to not see our prayers answered. He wants us to see our prayers a- yes. answered. This is actually what he's why he's telling us this. He's telling us that so that the Father will be glorified. Think about this. When we bear fruit, the Father's glorified. Yeah. So yeah. if we're gonna if we're going to think about this, if we're going to glorify the Father with our life, we're winning. Mm-hmm. We're praying and winning in those prayers, right? We're being victorious in those prayers. And the reason I like pointing that out is because a lot of people, they have this idea. They, they want to get very passive with their faith and very mm-hmm. passive uh, in, in these ways. And they think that God is totally passive. God is gentle, but he's not really passive. He's right. aggressive with this faith. Yes. Mm-hmm. Jesus is aggressive with this faith. He's aggressive in his actions and his, uh, and his will. He's aggressive with that. He's always leading us to triumph. And so we have this idea that you can be, you can only be passive and you have to let things happen. Mm-hmm. That's actually a, a deception of the enemy that you're constantly, well, just I'm just letting this happen. Right. right. That, that's a wrong, wrong thinking. It's not biblical, but people have taken their feelings of it and their fleshly thoughts and their fleshly logic of it and right. their will and developed a doctrine around that. Yeah. And it's not actually supposed to be. So he says, when you get your prayers answered or when your prayers are winning, the Father's glorified. Yes. Right. Yes. And you're proving to be a disciple or disciplined after Jesus. A disciple is someone disciplined after Jesus. So you're putting Jesus on when you pray and, and they're answered. Yeah. You're putting Jesus on. Yes. You're being dis- disciplined after him when you pray and and they come to pass. Mm -hmm. And the Father's glorified in that. So it's not a time for us to be passive with our faith. It's a time for us to apply our faith and expect to win, expect to have those uh, prayers answered. But again, that happens by abiding in Him and his words abiding yeah. in us. So. Well, so, yeah. and his there's the doctrine of sovereignty is really interesting when it comes to when it comes to prayer because so many people think that whatever's going to happen on the earth, God's just going to make it happen. So as you're sharing what you just shared about how God always wants us to win, he's reminding me of the verse in Corinthians where God's answers are always yes, yes. and amen yeah. when it's his word. If it's yeah. if it's his word that we're praying, his always response will be yes. Yes. Amen. So it's not, prayer is never supposed to be a question mark of, is it going to work? It's always on God's side. Yes, it's going to work. Amen. It's going to work. We just need to line up with his will. Well, see, that's where, that's one of the things that we see here. And and there's people that get like yesterday that somebody sent me a, a couple of questions and it was like, well, what about this? That means every person you pray for should be healed. Well, the answer to that is, yeah, they should. So when they're not healed, whose problem is that? Whose fault is that? Well, is it the one who is administering that, the, who's connected to the vine, and that flow is going through there? Because they're praying a prayer of faith. And as, that, as hands are laid or that, that reception takes place, there is a flow of healing that is coming from heaven, from the vine to the branch. And as that branch touches, that same supply is going into them. It's in that moment that they have to have, whoever's receiving that healing, they have to have the word so ingrained in them to where they go, wait a minute, no, this is not God's will for me to be sick. This is not God's will for me to be diseased. No, he supplied healing and I'm praying, I believe, and I believe I have received it. And then then it begins to manifest. And, yeah. and that's, you never see Jesus when he prayed. He never prayed, Lord, if it be your will, when I lay hands on them, that they be healed. You never see Jesus. You see Jesus saying, sickness, leave now. Mm-hmm. And he did it with authority and he did it with power. And he, he was not, he, may have, he was like pastors, he was gentle with that person. But that sin, that disease, that sickness, no, he commanded. I mean, you think about this. Jesus laid his hands and he commanded limbs to grow back. The, these are people that were battle hardened that when it's talking about they're marred, it literally in battle, their arms was removed. And Jesus commanded arms to grow back, limbs to grow back. And he didn't go, Lord, if it be your will. Well, why didn't he? Because the Bible clearly says that Jesus didn't do anything or say anything that wasn't the father's will. 
So obviously it's God's will for healing to take place if Jesus didn't do anything he didn't hear from the Father or the Father didn't tell him to do. So that's what we see. That supply is there. How do we get that supply? We abide in him. The reality of this word is so ingrained in us that when we are pressed, it comes out of us. Mm -hmm. And that's where that's, that's really when, when I hear Jesus say that, my words abide in you. So it's not just me abiding in him. Because I can abide in him and his words not be in me. Yeah. But when his words is in me, it becomes my identity. It yeah. becomes my it becomes my supply. It becomes the nutrients of my body that comes out of me and it produces the fruit of heaven. Yeah. Well, let let's look at this because you know, a lot of times people are praying prayers that aren't from the abiding place, right? right. They're they're praying prayers of things that uh, God didn't tell them to pray. God doesn't want them to pray. And then there's no, he, there's no word, there's no faith, yeah. and there's no manifestation. Yes, but look at this. It's very interesting where it says in verse 7, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Well, that seems to be very open, right? Like ask whatever you wish. And people will take that and they'll yeah. run with that. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, Lord, give me a quadrillion dollars right now. You know, <laughs> it's whatever I wish. They immediately right. turn into four-year-olds. <laughs> they well, <laughs> what they do is they immediately turn to their flesh. Yeah. Yes. For what what does my flesh want? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? None of these. God's not talking about okay. This one moment, I'm going to let you get in the flesh, and the flesh will do the work for you. No, no, no. no. It's always by the Spirit, right? Yes. And and the answer is in the same verse. It says, "If you abide in me, and my words abide in you." In other right. words, what I'm about to ask need to be His words. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. It needs to be His words. In yeah. other words, I don't need to be asking for something that is not the words of the Father. That's yeah. not. The words of Jesus is not given to me by the Holy Ghost. His words need to abide in me. In other words, they need to take up residence in me. His words are what needs to come out of me. Yeah. His will is what I need to be abiding in yes. and needs to come out of me. Um, and then when I'm fully immersed in his will and his words and fully immersed in both his will and his words, then what I ask for is coming out of those. Yeah. Right. It's not coming out of my flesh. It's coming, it's out, of coming out of those. And now I have yeah. a right to receive it every single time. Yeah. Yes, sir. And so a lot of times people I've seen, they, they utilize that and they instantly go fleshly on, on yes. verses like that. It's never to be done by the flesh. It's, never, it's always to be done by the Spirit. Reminds me of Proverbs 4.18, or not Proverbs, I'm sorry, not Proverbs 4.18, it's Proverbs 4, and it's, my son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings, do not let them depart from your sight, and that's Joshua 1.8, that's Psalms 1, all of those scriptures is talking about that meditating yes. on the word, getting them into your spirit, yes. and then verse 21 says, keep them in the midst of your heart, so he didn't say keep them on, on your flesh and from the things of your flesh, your words go, his words go into your spirit, and then verse 22, it says, For they are life to those who find them and health to all their body. Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it yes. flows the springs of life. So from your spirit that is abiding with God and the words of God abiding in you flow this life of God that is in us, out of yeah. us, into others, into ourselves, and it begins that fruit production of heaven. Well, I, rem I remember when we started doing corporate prayer and I was, it, that's really when the Lord started opening up my eyes to just uh, how I could abide with him. One of the things that pastor made a point to reinforce over and over again was it was not, it would not have been good for me to only get my fellowship with the Lord through spirit-led prayer and spirit-led worship. Yeah. There needed to be a balance of spirit-led word. Yes. Because it's so easy in times of prayer or in times of worship for there to be a mixing of the spirit and the soul. Yeah. And the soul can honestly, it can get deceptive because it yeah. can, yeah. the soul can try and sound like the spirit. And so if, if we have the word of God, God living on the inside of us, that's 
<laughs> that's the interpreter of whether or not something is God or whether or not something is me and, and my soul in that way, the, the soul part of me. And so the word's huge to ensure that we don't fall prey to deception. We don't fall prey to a voice that's not his voice. Yeah. The word is a keeping agent to yes. keep us in line yeah. with his will. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Um, it's, it's Colossians 3, 16, the first part of it. We don't have to, it's all of it it talks about. It actually goes on to talk about being filled with the Spirit. But he says, let the words of Christ richly dwell in you. Mm -hmm. So when you think about that, why is, why is Paul giving us this command? Let the words of Christ richly dwell in you. And Because the very next thing we read is the same thing that we read uh, when we was talking about in Ephesians 5 yesterday where he mm -hmm. talks about continue to be, be being filled yeah. with the Holy Spirit. He, he, this is the same thing that is being said in Ephesians 5, I believe it was a five, Ephesians 5.17. It's Colossians 3.16. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. So we see that there's a parallel there with being filled in the Spirit, which is abiding in Him, and the word coming into you, and it begins to flow. But what I, what I really love about this is that the, one of the things that's been well, in the, the, the parallel to being filled with the Spirit, because yes. not everybody knows that, is yes, where it says when you uh, teaching and admonishing one another with psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts. That's the same, that's the exact same wording right. that's used in Ephesians 5 when it says be filled with the Spirit, singing in your heart, having a melody in your heart. Yes, sir. And so that's where that connection is. Is So you're seeing right here that it, as we flow in the Spirit, we're supposed to have the Word that richly dwells in us yeah. too. To yes. It's a balance in our lives and not just one or the other. He understands how our flesh can get us off. Yeah. You right. know? And that's why you have some churches that are quote-unquote filled with the Spirit, but they're off because they don't balance it with prayer and the Word, right? right? Mm -hmm. Or you can have people that are uh, prayer, right? They're in worship, but they don't have the prayer and the Word. You can have people of prayer, but they don't have the Word and worship. You can have, you can have the Word, right. but not have prayer and the worship. So mm -hmm. you've got to have that balance of fellowship all the time, and you're seeing that right here in this verse. Yes, sir. So go ahead. So it, but one of the things that is, is just been coming up to me as, as we've been talking this goes back to me that you've been given this word a lot late, lately. It's in Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed yeah. to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can be a proof yes. of what God's good, pleasing, and perfect will is. So one, we've already seen that it's God's will for us to produce fruit. It's God's will for us to produce fruit because he's glorified in that. But one of the very things that you see in producing fruit is that the word is in us mm -hmm. and we are abiding in him. And then we have in Ephesians 5 where it says that you are washed by the washing of the yeah. Word. So yeah. the Word gets in you. And one yeah. of the things that I heard I was, when I was listening to Brother Hagan, he said this. He goes, when you're talking about abiding in the Word, or, or so I'm going to say Word, he goes, or abiding in, in Christ, understand that He is the Word, but He is the living Word. And he goes, this Bible is the written word. Mm -hmm. So the more of this written word gets into you, it unveils more of the living word. So this written word will actually teach you to how to abide deeper in the living word. Mm -hmm. And then and then That's one of the very good. And one of the things that he said that I I've never thought of it quite like this, is he said, and now what is the Holy Spirit's job in all of this? The Holy, one of the, in John 16, we see that the Holy Spirit says, uh, the, Jesus says that the Holy Spirit will come and he, the, he's the spirit of truth and he will come. Brother Hagin read a, a, a certain translation and he goes, or maybe it was the original language. I, I hadn't remembered at the moment how he said it, but he says, that actually can be translated this way. The Holy Spirit will lead you into all, or, or will lead you into the reality of, of the truth. Yeah. yeah. And the word is the truth. Yeah. So as this word gets into your spirit and you begin to pray from that standpoint, the reality of the finished work of heaven 
then becomes what comes out of you and you literally begin to walk as Jesus walked. Just as scripture tells yeah. us to do. You begin to have the same manifestations as Jesus did. Why, why? Because are we some this great, mighty, powerful being? No, but because Jesus is this great, big, mighty, powerful being yeah. and he's in us, we're in him and we are one. And you, you see that as you're transformed from the conformity, the patterns, the limits of this world. The limits are taken off yeah. once you're transformed into who Jesus is. Yeah, amen. Yeah, amen. <laughs> I, I mean, as you're talking, it's, it's such a rich topic that I was seeking the Lord on how to, how to bring it down. Not that I want to bring the word down, but just to make it practical to how can I walk this out tomorrow? Yeah. How can we walk this out as a church? And really, for me, it boils down to kind of how we wrapped up yesterday. What are we hungry yeah. for? Yeah. Like what you're talking about is having the living word revealed to us. That's a reality that we can walk in. Yeah. Having every prayer answered. That's a reality that we can yes. walk in. This yeah. is all stuff that's available to everybody. Yeah. Like this is this is not something that's relegated to fivefold ministers of the gospel, not at all. to the people that we see on platforms and that lead ministries around the world. This is for every believer has the ability to increase to that point that the living word can become real to us today. Exactly. And it requires being transformed. It requires a hunger. Yes. So some, like as we started prayer at the ministry, one of the most helpful things pastor has ever done for me has been he gave, you gave us a list of prayer points that we prayed out regularly. And the first few were, Lord, I need you. I want you, I have to have yeah. you, I'm yeah. hungry for you. Anyone can pick up this Bible and read it, but it's the hungry that are going to be transformed by it. Yeah. Yeah. It's the hungry that are going to see his face different. It's the hungry that are going to have this come alive to us. Right. So yeah. all of the, like all you got this revelation because you were hungry for him. Yeah. And as you studied the word, that hunger made it come to life. So all of this, how do prayers get answered? We have to get hungry for him. Yeah. We've got to get hungry for his presence. Yeah. Yes. We've got to get hungry just to fellowship with him. We've got to get hungry. And that to me is that what's the bottom line takeaway that I can do today? I can start to get hungry today. Yeah. I can start to press into God more than I did 10 seconds ago today. Right. This, my eyes are getting open and I see God is bigger than I thought yeah. he could be. There's a depth to verses I didn't even know was there. And as Pastor Zach and Pastor Brian are talking, there's more. I can get get hungrier. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether I grasp every single thing that's coming out of the mouths of people on the broadcast. Yeah. The important takeaway for me is even if I don't necessarily get everything that's being said, I can. Yeah. And I can have all of him because he qualified me to get hungry. Yes. He qualified me to be full of him. He qualified me to have answered prayers. Yes. He qualified me through the blood of Jesus to win in life. Yeah. I can. I just need to get hungry. And the, you said something that I think is huge because I want to talk about Elijah here in a second. But we immediately, sometimes we talk about Elijah and we talk about Elijah in his office because he's one of my favorite people to read mm -hmm. about in Scripture. Like, mine is Jesus, okay, yes. But you start thinking about Elijah and the yeah. works Elijah did. I mean, my son is named after his predecessor, Elisha. Like, that's where Elias has got, Elias got his name. But you're talking about being made or qualified for this. Mm -hmm. It's not a five-fold ministry gift that gets their prayer answered. It's not there are the ascension gifts. It's not leaders. This is not just for those people. But, but you read it yesterday in James 5, 16. It says this. It says, therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray to one another that you may be healed. But yeah. listen to the start. Listen to this part. The effective prayers of righteous men can accomplish much. That, that right there is how, this is the starting process of it is, I'm abiding with God, how do I abide with God? It's the fact that I have received Christ Jesus as Lord, He's made me righteous, and that righteousness is what allows me to do it. So when you're praying from this, your first step of how do I get my prayers, and the practical sense of this is, do, is this right here. Remember this, you are a righteous 
man yes. and woman. Notice it didn't say a righteous prophet of God. Right. He didn't say a righteous pro or the last prophet. Right. Because right? that's one of the things that, that Elijah got into. said, I'm the, I'm the only one left doing, doing your bidding. He, he even got, so think about this. He even got soulish in that moment. And this is Elijah we're talking about. Yeah. Like, Elijah. Like, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the word says the only one that was greater than him as far as prophets go is Moses. If, if I'm not mistaken, the word says that. So, but you see this, it didn't say his office. It didn't say any, any other accomplishments or anything about Elijah other than the fact that he said this, the effective uh, prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. The very next thing in verse 17, Eliza, uh, Eliza, Lord forgive me. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Mm -hmm. So Elijah was able to make the earth not receive rain for three and a half years based off one prayer. Yeah. But he did it from a righteous man. Well, this is before Jesus. How did he do that? He had faith in God. He abided mm -hmm. with God and he abided in the word and he spent time with him in spirit led worship, prayer and uh, in the word. And then you see this, he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the earth for three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the sky poured rain, and the earth produced its fruit. It's the righteous, it's the position of righteousness, and you're a fellowship with God, and yeah. you're, then you're able to receive that word, receive, have that time in prayer with him, have that time in worship with him that, yeah. that connects it all. And with what you said in that righteousness piece, that's how you apply that right now. Yeah. You, you're righteous. You don't have to do any extra work to be righteous. You're yeah. righteous now. Yeah, Jesus was a man. Yeah. He gave up divinity to come yes. to earth. And as a man, his prayers are still being answered. Today. Like the prayers he released on the earth that we would be kept from the evil one, that's still being kept today. Because yeah. he released it as a man under authority with yeah. the authority of God. Our prayers can have lasting impact, can have generational impact not because we're something special, because we're connected to God yeah. who's transformed us into his image and his likeness. So much of this has to do with us allowing God to open our eyes to see who we really are. Yeah. Who's really the one praying? It's not this earth suit that's no. praying. There's a spirit being on the inside of each and every single one of us. And if we're born again, our spirit being has become one with the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And when we pray in line with the will of God yeah. and the word of God, it's the spirit of God that's praying out. Yes. It's the spirit of God that's releasing decrees over a city, over a family, over a business. Yes. It's God himself speaking when we yield and when we partner with him. Yeah. But it requires a partnership and how do you know how to do that you get in the word yes absolutely so it says here I want to ask you all this question so it says that if you abide in me which you talked about yesterday and my words abide in you ask whatever you wish so how do his words abide in us how can we grow that how can we stay there what are the things so that we are full of his word what are those? Well, it's that's where I believe Joshua. Putting you, I'm putting you on the spot, but yeah, I understand. Oh, Joshua, <laughs> Joshua one eight. Yeah, where he says, meditate on my. So Old Testament, he's talking about the law of God. Us is the word of God. Joshua one eight, meditate on the word day and night, so that as it, it gets in, uh, as you go, you you'll prosper in everything that you do. Right. The word, well, a lot of times we hear that word meditate and it has such a negative connotation because of different things. So what does that actually mean? If you look at that, that word actually means to murmur. You go throughout your day. Like one of the mistakes I used to make is this, that I would try to memorize entire pieces of, like chapters of scripture. And if I couldn't, I'd, be, I'd get mad, I'd get condemned. And then in and then situations like this, I wouldn't know it and I, because it was all head knowledge. But then I was like, Lord, what do I need to do? And the Lord told me this. Focus on one scripture, just one. And I want you to read that, and then I want you to murmur that to yourself throughout the day. Like that Joshua 1.8, one, and, and uh, Romans 8.11. It's, the, it's the, the spirit that gives life to the mortal body. And you, as you begin to murmur that, it's, mm -hmm. you begin to chew on that, and you begin to get all the nutrients out of that. And the Lord showed me this one time. He said, at first it'll be here. It's mental ascent. 
He goes, but the more that you begin to chew on that, the heavier it gets, the heavier it gets, the heavier it gets, the heavier it gets. And he says, that thing's going to get down into your spirit. And then when it happens, it come alive. And then it become, you start getting that revelation and you start getting the results of that word because it gets into your spirit. So find that scripture. And that one, like one of the ones that I had to meditate on for a couple of years was 2 Corinthians 2.14. God is always leading me to victory. So that, that told me this. It doesn't matter what situation that I'm in. I know that I have victory because I'm being led by God. So yeah. I quit looking at the situation because I, I daily I would tell myself that. Not even daily. I'm, I'm like, I, was, I set reminders in my phone like every 15 minutes, go read that word or have it, have it said to me. And I got it in my spirit and it became, it became my identity yeah. because it's in me. It's not just in my head. Yes. It's, in my, yeah. it's in who I am. Yeah, we're supposed to be good Bereans of the Word. So we're supposed to be good students of the Word. Mm -hmm. So what Pastor Zach is really describing is an aspect of of meditating, which is kind of part of studying the Word of God. It's in my study, pulling that out, but there's other ways to study God's Word too. So as we're reading through the Word, you can do topical word studies. You can do book studies or... Really, it's just digging into the Word of God. And if you want, at Boomerang University, we teach you how to study the Word. But, plug, but honestly, <laughs> we, plug. I'm, not, I'm not shamed <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I'm really pumped about it. But studying the Word is huge because we've got to be a good student of the Word. So yeah. studying the Word is a way, but then also, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So not just reading it on my own, but yeah. I learn the Word by putting faith-filled preaching into my yeah. spirit, man, because I don't just want my limited understanding deciphering this Word of God or even solely just me and Holy Spirit. There are a gifts and the body of Christ that are given by God to help train me up as a member of the body of Christ. So putting in anointed teaching of the word of God to help break it down. Brother Brian, you know, Brother Tracy, these men and women of God that we're connected to that'll unlock the word. So studying it. And as we study it, what does that do? It teaches us God's voice the Lord tells us my sheep know my voice and the strangers we won't follow. So intentionally studying to hear his voice, that study and prayer to me have been the biggest ones to grow in the word. Have you seen somebody though? All right. So basically what we're talking about is that when you get poked, the word comes out of you. You know, it's like if you, if you had a sponge and the sponge was full, and then you poke that sponge, what's going to come out of the sponge? Whatever it's full of. If it's water, then water will come out of the sponge. To me, that's what that verse is saying, is we need, we need to be so full of the Word, and abiding, the Word abides in us. Yeah. Yeah. The Word abides in us. The Word abides in us, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. It's in us. It's a part of who we are. It's at our, at our core. So... We can see that imagery there that when the world pokes us, when the curse, when corruption tries to poke us, that what comes out of us is the word, and that's the only thing that comes out of us. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing that comes out of Because if anything comes out of us that's not the word or not based in the word, then it's not of God, right? right? right. And that leads to the potential for failure. So if we get poked and our thoughts bleed, you know, worry, Mm -hmm. then that's going to lead to failure. If we get poked and we, our our thoughts ooze out, you know, anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. Then that's the recipe for failure. So we want to change that. We want to change that completely so that when we get poked by the world, when the curse and corruption tries to get on us, we're so full of the things of God, the word of God, that that's what comes out of us. In other words, we, we pretty instantaneously recognize this can't stand. Right. This, there's no way that this attack will stand because every weapon formed against us shall not prosper, right? Shall not prosper. And every fiery dart is quenched. Yeah. The yes. yoke destroys. Or, excuse me, I said that backwards on Sunday too. The anointing 
destroys every yoke. Yes. Yes. The yoke is destroyed by the anointing, which is right. what I was trying to say. And uh, so uh, the yoke is destroyed by the anointing. So we know that these are absolutes that the Bible tells us. But see, the only reason that I have that in me is because I've meditated on the Word and I put it in me so that when I get poked, I go, no, this can't stand, yeah. right? That has to be in every believer. Every yeah. believer has to take their own responsibility for believing those things. But think about this now. Think about this. Have you ever seen somebody who is reading the Word, they're going to church, they're worshiping, they're in all the points of fellowship, and with God, they, might, they would even say, I'm meditating on the Word. But yet, when they get poked, it's not the Word that comes out of them. Mm -hmm. So are they, are they abiding in the Word? But yet, they're spending time reading the Bible. So what's the difference? They're reading it with their head and not being led by the Spirit. It doesn't quite say it just like I'm going to word it, but that's John 5 where the, the Word of God, Jesus himself, was right in front of them. Yeah. The, the, the scriptures that they had been studying was right in front of them. He was the manifestation of the Word. And Jesus basically says, you search the scriptures for eternal life, but it's standing right in front of you, and you won't receive it. You, can, you have an intellectual knowledge that's in this Bible. Yeah. You can read this and gain in, an intellectual prowess. But if you're it's just in your head, it's not going to do any good. I mean, that's that's Romans ten. Faith has got to be in your and it's, it's in your it's in your mouth and in your heart. Yes. How does it get there? Faith comes through hearing and hearing the word of God, and it's got to get down into your spirit because it has nothing to do with faith in your head. Yeah. Faith in your head, like I'll I'll forget what's in my head, but I can't forget what's in my spirit. Yeah. Well, and it also reminds me of a word that you gave me last year. I don't know if you gave it to me or you preached it, but I have it written down, is yield to the word. Yes. And when you said it, I realized that for every person, we have a decision to either yield to a situation, yield to an emotion, yield to a circumstance, or we have an ability to yield to the word. And I found when I've been in those situations that you're describing and I've incorrectly acted, I've been yielding to something other than the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And if I would just yield, whether or not I, I have even fully believed it, I found if I'll just yield to it and take a step out of the boat, God will ensure that my feet don't yeah. slip. Yeah. He'll enlarge my footsteps under me. So I, I need to yield regardless of how I feel. Stop yeah. living by my feelings. Stop living by my sight and yield to whatever it is that God says to be doing. Yeah, I, I think the two words that will allow the Word of God to abide in us, the two actions that we need to make sure that we're having take place is yielding and getting revelation. And they go hand in hand. So you can read the Word, you meditate on the Word, but if you never have any uh, Holy Spirit revelation of that Word, um, it's not, you're not going to be full of the Word. If you will not yield to the word and allow it to change you and transform you. Yes. Remember, the verse you quoted early in Romans 12, 2 is uh, where it says, be transformed. Yes. Be transformed by, by the word of God. Be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Yeah. So a lot of times people are reading the word, but they're not asking the question, okay, how do I change my life according to this? Yes. Like what changes, you know, very practically, what changes need to occur uh, by this scripture? Yeah. What changes need to be there? So they'll read the word and they think they, because they understand it, they think they got it, but they have no revelation and they have no yielding to it, mm -hmm. right? And so they actually are not full of the word at all. They're full of trivia. Mm -hmm. and Bob, Bible trivia doesn't win spiritual battles. It's a revelation of the word, right. and an action on it wins spiritual battles. Yes. It's a really good clip right there. Bible yeah. trivia doesn't win spiritual battles. That's what the Pharisees had. Yeah. They had Bible trivia, but when the reality, when the real was standing in front of them in the form of the Son of God, the Messiah, the anointed one, they didn't even recognize the anointing. Yeah. 
They didn't even recognize God and what he was doing. They had no concept that that was actually him. So much so that they went on to try and kill him, you know, and uh, tried to set him up, tried to do everything, became his enemy, became an enemy of God because they knew Bible trivia, but they had no revelation of the word. You you see that? And they knew more than, I mean, we're not talking about a little bit of Bible trivia. They knew the Bible. They knew the word. They knew the law. But they didn't really know it right. in a revelatory way. And they didn't yield to it. How does this need to change me? So like when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and he comes there, Nicodemus knows Scripture, but he hadn't yielded to Scripture. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, he needed to yield to Jesus. Yeah. All right, show me how. And I'm reminded of 1 John uh, chapter 2 and verse 20 and verse 27. The, the thing that teaches us, the thing that teaches us is the anointing. Yes. The anointing teaches us all things. So if I don't know how to yield to the anointing, then I'm not going to receive the true knowledge of the Word. Yeah. Which means I'm not abiding in the Word. I can, I can right. be in services all day long. I can be here in preaching all day long. But if I'm not yielding to the anointing and not yielding to the Word, I'm not going to get revelation of it. And it's not abiding in me. And when I get poked, what's going to come out of me is fleshly logic, yeah. but not the Word of God. And so these are things that trip me. You know, we can know these scriptures and we can quote these scriptures, but do we... Can we live by them? Right. Can we live by them? Do they abide in us to the point where it's our life? Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, and most of the time the answer is no to that. Most of the time people do not know that, and they don't have an answer to that. They think they do because they can win a Bible trivia game, or they, mm-hmm. can, they can have the Scripture. I'm reminded of the story I told. Uh, for example, there's a great example of this. I'm reminded of the story I told a few weeks ago. I'm at this conference, major conference. The guy's sitting there. Oh, yes. The guy from, uh, I think, Botswana. And uh, he is finishing every scripture. When the speaker quotes a, quotes a scripture, he's finishing the scripture. Before they even start speaking it, he starts quoting it. He knew the scriptures. He had them memorized. So memorization is good, but it's not the word abiding in yeah. you. And uh, so he, he goes and he finishes that. And the Lord prompts me. And, and this really blessed me when I saw this later. I didn't see it at the time. It just bothered me. The Lord prompts me to go to him and say, what can I do for you? And uh, he said, oh, let me think about that. So at the next meeting, he came back to me. He said, I need a plane ticket. Uh, to go home. Well, what that guy didn't know was where I was operating right there, I had the gift of faith Mm -hmm. in operation for him and a word from the Lord that said, what can I give you? And it's the same thing as like when the disciples came up to the lame guy at the gate. You know, silver and gold, I don't I don't have on me right now, and that's not going to answer your question anyway. Silver and gold's not going to fix your foot. Right. But what I have, right, I was carrying something. It wasn't the money yeah. to get his ticket, but I had faith to produce it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I had faith yeah. that was there. And I said, well, I don't have the money to give that. As soon as I said that, his whole demeanor sunk. Uh, and see, his faith, although he could repeat all these scriptures, the word wasn't abiding, abiding in him. He had no revelation and no yielding to it. And that's why his whole demeanor sunk. And I feel pretty certain that he didn't get even what I released faith for. But I had faith to see it come to pass. Yeah. I know now how that feels when I'm walking like that and what the results of it are. Yeah. And I know that, that it was available. It was there in my hands through Christ to give to him. Yeah. But because he was not looking at the word, he was looking at uh, the flesh in front of him. He, he missed it, right? Yes, and at the very least, he was down and anxious and worried over when he should have been excited and yeah. expectant. So... He had the word by trivia, trivia in him, and by logic he had it in. He had mental assent. He knew all these scriptures, 
but he wasn't walking and yielding to them in a revelation of them. Yeah. You see, and there's a big difference between that. And this is the difference because you can have people that will actually say, you can have people say, well, I abide in the word every day. And we had that one time, you know, a lady, and she, was, she said, I read the word three to four hours every day. It's the type of person that I actually believe she did that. I believe yeah. that she actually did do that. But then I watched her do one of the most cruel things I've ever seen in my life to somebody because she abided in time with the Bible, mm -hmm. but she didn't have the Word of God abiding in her, yeah. and she wasn't abiding yeah. in it. You see, she didn't have revelation of it, how she needed to change herself. She was looking at the Word so pridefully, and so I've arrived mm -hmm. that she was just like, oh, yes, I agree with that. And God's not looking for your agreement. Right. It's yeah. right whether you agree or not. Right. He's looking for change. Yes. Right. He's looking for yielding. He's yeah. looking for you to get a revelation of what he's actually doing in that verse. Yes, right? Sir. He doesn't need our, our snobby agreement with his right. word that he already knows is true. Oh, yes, praise God, amen. You know, he doesn't need that. He needs us to be changed yeah. by it. He needs us to be, Romans 12 too, transformed by it, right? Yeah. Yeah. He needs us to be transformed. And when we're transformed by that, when we're transformed by that, then the power of God is released. And when the world and corruption and, you know, deceptive thoughts and anxiety and yeah. worry pokes us, the true living word of God comes out of us yeah. in prayer yeah. and we get everything that we want because that's what we're full of. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Absolutely. Amen. Well, thank you for being on the podcast today. It was great to have you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, amen. I'm serious. I, I have no more on that. <laughs> well, just thinking of that, I, as, when I was reading Colossians 3.16, I just I was like, Lord, that's that's a big verse. That's not just why why would I was like, Holy Spirit, why would you say let the words of Christ richly yeah. dwell in you, not just be in you, richly dwell in you? And I was I asked the Lord, I was like, I was like, I I, I need help because I don't I don't know this. And I, and I it it was after a day or two, I just I was sitting there and I actually told Danielle about it when I, when it hit me. I was in the, laying in bed about to sleep and all of a sudden the Lord and basically this is what I believe the Lord said. He goes. I can only transform you based on the amount of the word that's in you. I can't transform you if the word's not in you because that's the, that's who you actually are. That's right. If I'm not if I'm not in you, how can I change you into me? Yeah. If I'm not in you, how can I how can I give you this revelation knowledge? How can how can you yield to the things of me if my word's not yes. in you? How can yes. you walk in it? You can't. Well, and it has when it says let the word of Christ richly dwell in you, then you're looking at, I don't just have a beginner level of it. Yes. It's a rich supply of, now watch, not just of trivia, yes, sir. but a rich supply of revelation, mm -hmm. a rich supply of the word that I yield to, right? Yes. Revelation and yielding is how the living word abides in us. Revelation and yielding. So I need to have a supply of the word that I'm, yielded to a rich supply that I'm yielded to. I need to have a rich supply that I have revelation on, right? Yeah. Okay, well, revelation and yielding only happens by the leading of the Holy Ghost and the revelation of the anoint through the anointing in that way. So the Holy Spirit plays a part in this. So for us not, you know, if you want to have a rich supply of the Word in you, you need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to be operating and walking in the Holy Ghost. We need to pray in the, in the Spirit more. You look in terms of fellowship. When we're spending time in Spirit-led Word, right, alone, by ourselves, we need the Holy Spirit to make that Word come alive to us. So if you want to know, how do I get that Word in me? You need personal, intimate fellowship with God. When you're praying, so I'm putting literally putting the Word in as I'm reading it, and as I'm meditating on it, and as I'm confessing the word or murmuring the word throughout the day, I'm putting the word in and I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to give me revelation of it. I'm, I'm yielding. When I read it, I'm asking the question, how does this need to change me today? Yeah. Yeah. How does this need to change me? Holy Spirit, show me how this needs to change me today. 
But then when I'm praying, so now I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. So first is spirit-led word. Now it's spirit-led prayer, right? So when I'm praying in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is taking those words that are in there and he's bringing revelation to me. He's opening that word up. He's yeah. enlightening me and shine, illuminating that word to me to get me to revelation and show me where I need to yield to it. Yeah. So you can see in our relationship with the Lord, uh, you can be worshiping him, right? And I'm thanking him. I'm giving him praise. He inhabits the praises of his people, uh, when I when I worship him and I'm thanking him, then I remember where it says uh, that in Romans one that they, their minds were dark, yes. so they had no revelation and they were not thankful. So when I worship him and I get thankful, it allows illumination to come. Yeah. So if I want to get the word in me, then those three parts of revelation are very of. Fellowship yeah. are very important. Spirit-led worship, spirit-led word, spirit-led prayer. But then the other part is that you do all three of those things in a corporate fellowship. And in a corporate fellowship, those things come alive to you as well. And when somebody is flowing under the anointing and they are releasing the word of God, the anointing will cause those things to come alive. How many times have y'all been sitting in a service, somebody else is preaching, you're not personally in time with the Lord, you're not personally worshiping in the word or prayer, you're listening to the preaching, right? You're under the corporate anointing uh, where you're in corporate fellowship, and all of a sudden somebody says something, the pastor says something, the minister says something, and you go, oh, Oh, you know, yeah. I've watched it on both of y'all's yes. faces over the years. You know, it's like, I see it. Glory to God. Yes. You know, how the revelation come? Or the Lord says, you need to yield to this. Yeah. You need okay. to yield this. How did that come? In that corporate fellowship, yep. right? Yeah. In that corporate. So our fellowship with him is how these things come to pass. Yes. This is how the word goes from trivia to revelatory and something I need to yield to is yes. in our fellowship. Yes. Spirit-led word, spirit-led worship, spirit-led prayer, and corporate fellowship yes. uh, in those things as well. That's where we need to stay all the time. And then throughout the day, we're praying, we're confessing the word over our lives. That's how it becomes rich. But it needs to be a function of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not a function of the mind. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a function of the mind, you're not going to be getting what you need. You're, you'll be actually you'll be fooling yourself and deceiving yourself if you live by the mind and not by the spirit. Yeah. I said something uh, to William just the other day. I said our fellowship, and this goes along with the fellowship with God as well, but it also goes along with our fellowship with others. Our fellowship. A proper, godly, heavenly fellowship, whether it be with a person or God or whoever it is, a spouse, whatever it is, a proper, godly, heavenly fellowship never goes and gets more life from the mind. It comes from the spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. It has to be spiritually uh, generated, yes. spiritually birthed, right? Mm -hmm. If you want a proper, godly, heavenly relationship, it's birthed by the Spirit and it, and it generates from the Spirit, not from our head. But most people are in fellowship with God and they're in fellowship with other people only in their soul, in their mind, will, and emotions. Yeah. That's where their fellowship is. And it always suffers, and it's always lower. Well, the same thing applies to God. If our fellowship with Him is not by the Spirit, is not by the Spirit, then it'll never be full. And that Word will not abide in us richly. And we'll ask for stuff, but it, we won't see it. We won't, we won't see those things come to pass. It has to be by the Spirit, which is why the Holy Ghost is so important to us these days. And it's why the devil fights these things. Mm -hmm. We need the anointing. We need the Spirit of God yeah. inside of us. And we need to operate in the Holy Spirit in every relationship that we have. Yeah. Be it you know with you or with one of us here or with God, we need to operate by the Holy Spirit, not in our soul, not in our mind, yes. will, and emotions. That's not where it generates. So as we operate by the Spirit, the anointing 
teaches us and reveals to us and shows us how to yield to all things in the word, that word becomes rich yeah. yes. inside of us. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Anything else to add today? I think the only thing that was coming up to me as you were talking, because old me would have heard this and would have immediately turned it into a checklist of all my prayers are going to be answered tomorrow if I do all <laughs> yeah. of these things. Right. And obviously what you just said is key. So I'm not at all trying to take away from that, but to add to it, it all works because we love God. And that's yeah. so simple. I know it's mm-hmm. simple and it's so simple that it may yeah. seem like a duh, but <laughs> honestly, so much that is so simple of the kingdom, we've overlooked it because we've just thought it's simple. But in order for the list to work, I've got to be doing it because I love God. Yes. In order for fellowship to be proper, I've got to be fellowshipping because I love God. Yeah. And instead of it being a list or being a chore or being a task, this gets so exciting yeah. because I'm in yeah. love with my God and He, because He loved me first and every day gets to be an adventure yes. of, what do you have today for me, Lord? Yes. What's going to be on the agenda today? What are we going to yeah. do today? What do I get to learn about today? And it stops being boring and I think or I think the reason the Lord's bringing that up is because it's been so key over the last few weeks at Boomerang is the Lord's drawing us back Mm -hmm. to a place of reset fellowship, drawing us back into fresh intimacy with Him. And how do we fall in love with God? We set our minds on our first love. We look at Him that way. So for all of it, instead of it being a list, Let's realize this is an opportunity to know God. (laughs) Like this is an opportunity to live out John 17, 3. Amen. Glory to God. We love you. Father, right now we just pray that your word would richly dwell in every person now in Jesus' name. We thank you. Praise you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Thank you, Father for your overflowing word. Thank you, Lord, for the word that transform us. Thank you, Lord, that you have lifted up your word to the height of your name. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that your word (laughs) is at the height of your name. Yes. Lord, we receive your word done in us, operating in us, and Lord, we (laughs) yield to your word, and we believe that we receive revelation by the Holy Spirit of your word all the time. And Lord, let us abide in you and, your, and abide in your word so that when we pray, Lord, every prayer is answered. We'll ask what we will according to your word and according to you, and we'll see every prayer answered. And praise you and worship you. Amen.